ki khubor ka bati si tv lawan ra se phida ka umsingam bits aqua na molai moro ha ka jingdap san snem jong ka rengkat ka three olives restaurant m crown hotel khindai lat shillong bat ka orange nissan loan so po shillong one ban thiet ya ka kali dat san very go bat mai ka bas khan bat bit door Habaya Shimbenta Halor Kaman, Kabala Wanra, the MLA ka Congress, the Maulai constituency, Uba process ti Sokmi, Halor ka Jingpen Lut ka Sorkar, the Kiklurtenka, Haka Jing Yakun Persha, Yokunyang Jingpang Covid Katkandai, U MLA ka Congress, the Mausan Ram, Uba Himalaya, Muktan Shangpliang, Ula Ong, Katkum ka Jingkeng, ka Sorkar, Kalapun Lut, Hadu Prak Lurtam Bantit, Hadu Pralak Litartam, ka Sodium Hypochlorite, Nakabanta ban sunrek dawai hakaleng ki banta ka jala nang tapat ula ong bala kunthup langru ya ka jingpenlut ka NHM hakathup covid khat khandai nakabanta ban thit yiki shuki ki mie ki television ban panha yiki kamra bat ki wei pat ki jinglun Karbau MLA ka Congress na Omroy constituency ba George B Lingdo pan ula ong ba ka sarkar ka lapenlut hadu like lur tam tang na ka banta ban thit yiki mask uba George ula ong ru ba hakani ka jilla ki don kumbasan ni nriu lak tali ki long yeng bat lada ka jinglut ka long hadu kat ni ki mask ki la dai ban poi saman la ki thliu yeng ula pen pau ru ya ka jing sngau lengo ba hari bhoi district ki bor pahara ki ba am Haki kerdop ki hap ban penlut hi naladi ya ka bai bam bat ki wei pat ki jingdon kam kat ba ka jingkhen jong ka sarkar pat ka jinglut ka long hadu lai spa khandai phu khandai ka lur tengka ula bu jingkeli da ka ba ong syai ka sarkar ka penlut ya ka pisa so at the outset before i proceed ahead for my uh, discussion i would like to express my uh, thanks to Uh, to the doctors, to the nurses, paramedical staff, health workers, uh, police personnel, the Dor Bashnong, Nokma, women organization, church leader, uh, the government servant, uh, chief minister, deputy chief minister, the council of, min of uh, ministers, uh, the, uh, all the MLAs, the MDCs, the MPs who are for MPs, then the express my thanks to, uh, to you, sir, and especially to uh, Honorable uh, Speaker at his level, along with Assembly Secretary, they have uh, tried their best to give the best how to be together to fight out the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So I also would like to express my thanks to the staff of 108 because they have done a tremendous job. I also would like to express my thanks to on the media press person, Ilutnik and Prin. They have uh, done the best uh, for the uh, for uh, combination and work together with the state government regarding the fight of the COVID-19. So my sincere thanks to all the people in the state, because this is the time that we get an opportunity for our side to express our gra uh, to express our gratitude to each and every citizen that we are together of fighting the COVID-19 and, co and pandemic for the last uh, eight months. So this is, a, this is not the end of, uh, of, this, uh, of this pandemic. And even then that uh, we pray to God that God will do a miracle uh, in, in his uh, way that uh, soon that uh, this uh, pandemic he will die down, he will go away. And also that uh, normal again will come back and people and also all of us we can go the, the walk and do the thing like we have done before so the second to that sir the government have uh, tried the best at the beginning meant to give for uh, uh, the detail of the expenditure to the fourth pillar of democracy so now talking about the fourth pillar of democracy government have given uh, his uh, ex uh, expenditure to the to the to the, to the press so that people will knew that this is the amount that uh, we have been spent for the last uh, seven months for the fight of uh, the COVID-19. So this is a proper forum. So this is, a, this is uh, the forum that we have we have to deal for the issue of the state. Now the government have already been given of uh, the amount of uh, 399 crore or 400 crore for the spending of uh, the, for the seven months of the 
uh, of the need of the of the fight of the COVID-19. So it is a it is a proper that as uh, members of the house and also the and also the members of the August House and people of the state. So the government have already given the uh, amount of of uh, 319 crore, 400 crore, 400 crore, or maybe more than that. I feel that uh, it will be proper if the government give for uh, the detailed expenditure and bring up in the district wise. So we have for uh, we have for uh, 11 district here uh, in uh, in the state. So it will be proper. Will look nice if the government can give for uh, a break up of district wise regarding of the expenditure. I've also gone through about the about uh, uh, the state of uh, like uh, the state of like in Assam, Maharashtra, and some of the state they have given uh, the expenditure in detail and and break up wise. And I might like to to get uh, the uh, the uh, the information from the government too that uh, if government give a district wise break up that this is expenditure so that we can remove the doubt we can remove that uh, people will thought will think otherwise regarding the expenditure so it is a fact that uh, we have already seen that for the last seven months we have seen that uh, vehicle applying we have seen that the government are buying this buying that we have seen the public announcement and many things that have already been done but we understand once uh, once the thing have been when we, when we saw when you have seen that the government are, the government are working, everything is everything have to pay. So because of that reason, I would like to get the information from the government, I mean, if district wise, like we have the the East Castle, I would like to get information that district, district wise, the East Castle, West Castles, East Garo Hills, West Garo Hills, West Janta Hills, Ribhoi, South Garo Hills, North Garo Hills, East Janta Hill, Southwest Southwest Castle. Uh, south to west garbles uh, regarding with the uh, in core of the expenditure by the government for that because of many of I, many of of the uh, items which have been uh, spent by the government first of all sir number one uh, what is the total number of guarantee center run by the government the guarantee center because here we have two part of guarantee center one is a guarantee center run by the government. Another, another uh, guarantee center run run by the by the community or by the Nokma. That's why I wanted to get the, the total number of guarantee center run by the government, run by the by the by the community, and also by Nokma. Then we have also said uh, we have already see that the government that have already been hired, they have already been hired about the hotel, guest house. Uh, for the for the for the uh, for the purpose of guarantee, we would like to get the information sir, from the from the government that how many hotel, how many hotel have been hired, guest house, uh, guest house, or paying guests and orders that the government have hired, and if it, if it is possible, if they can give the name of the hotel or paying pay, or the paying guest or the guest house, it would be nice and proper that people of the state. Well, knew about the government or uh, height of even the hotel. Then also, so we like and we get to get information because what I experience in my uh, constituency, not only my constituency, all 60s constituency, we experience that the government have been supply, uh, the supply the, the dry Russian food to those uh, running for guardian centre. So here I wanted to get the information from the government about the, the, the item of food. Item of food that the government uh, have been supplying to uh, to guarantee center, because I explained in my constituency, uh, the, the the item of food like rice they supply, sometimes potatoes, even the biscuit and others, many item. Then I wanted to get the detail what more that the government is supplying uh, supplying of item. So we have, we have also uh, also seen that the government have already been spent money regarding with the, with the PPE. Number one, that the government, I we knew that the government have already been spent money on PPE. Government, have, government have spent money for sanitizer. So we like to get the uh, detailed information. How much the government have been spent regarding with this, with this item, the PPE, sanitizer, the gloves, ventilators, oxygen, medicine, the face shield, the face mask, 
Camel Scandal, Ambulant, uh, Sibinat, Trunat, RAT, RT-PCR. That also, sir, we would like to get the detailed information regarding with this uh, matters that the government, uh, the government has, uh, has uh, bought, sir. Then, so we also we have been experienced that the government have, uh, uh, we have seen that many testing center. So we like to get the information that how many testing center and some, some testing center or collection of sample have been uh, have been set up by the government in all the eleven uh, district. Sir, so <clears throat> also we like to get the in information regarding with total expenditure in court by the government on granting financial assistance. To construction workers, daily work, daily wage will level, level, and domestic workers during lockdown. So, regarding with this matter, I have to uh, express my uh, sincere thanks to Honorable Chief Minister, Deputy Chief Minister, the whole of your cabinet colleague, and also Honorable Chief Secretary and others. They have worked, worked hard, doing the homework. How to how to uh, extend financial assistance to those for those of the construction workers. We understand during lockdown, difficult people are getting jobs. They have to stay at home for matters of one month, two months, three months. But the government have done the, have done the best, give you financial assistance. Then this, this is the time that we would like to get information that uh, out of this money. Financial assistance to the construction workers, daily wage laborer, and domestic workers during lockdown. So in addition to that, we understand that uh, some of the, this amount of money which the government have been already promised to conscious workers, even that uh, daily daily wage uh, uh, level, they have not received the, the amount of money. My request, Mr. Honourable uh, Chief Minister, if uh, possible, that can we take uh, can we, uh, can we do justice to others who have not been getting, because the government during lockdown they have already uh, they have already been designed, informed to the DC, informed to the videos, informed to the, to the uh, headman, dogma, and others. Let, let the construction workers register it and get the some amount of 2,100 or more than that, less than that. The government knew better. But I would like to uh, uh, inform the, the, to the Honorable Chief Minister, uh, there are many of the construction workers, even daily, daily wage, the labor, they have not getting the, the amount which have been promised by, uh, by the government. So <clears throat> then, also, then we have about the, about the standard citizen. So the standard citizen, everybody knew that at the time everyone is everyone is a panic. Uh, the government is panic. Even the uh, the parents, each of all of us, we have panic. How to bring about about the standard citizen? So regarding also, I ex express my uh, sincere thanks to the government that you have uh, that you have picked up, you have helped, also you have you have bring back, you have brought back this, uh, the standard citizen from the whole of the whole of uh, the whole of the country. So regarding with this. It will be it would be proper. It would be proper if the government can give a detail how many how many standard citizens outside the state, how many standard citizens, and then how much the government have been spent regarding with this uh, regarding with this uh, standard uh, citizen. So I also need to get information from, from the government regarding in during lockdown. Because we knew that the government the government have been have given excellent financial assistance to those standard citizens. Then they have always been pay, paying for paying for even for the train ticket. If, even I uh, wanted to get information whether the government at the time of lockdown is there any citizen have been brought by 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 flight. For some state in the country, they have uh, even take care for the flight. Even flight ticket have been taken taken into consideration or not by uh, by the by the government. <clears throat> this is the this is a, this is the very important that I wanted to get information. Then again, sir, about the about the school fees. <coughs> Once upon a time, I remember that the government, that the government said that because of the lockdown, many of the poor family, many of the uh, uh, many of the uh, um, parents didn't get a job. But the government decided that uh, we will waive off, waive off the school fees of the DPL. Then I wanted to get information regarding with that whether they, whether they have for uh, waive or not regarding uh, uh, school fees for the DPL. Then we, uh, I wanted to get information. Like because I saw that even saw even I even government have already dispute about ambulance that ambulance government bought that is already bought from Chief Minister uh, Chief Minister Relief Fund that how many ambulance have been have been bought then how many uh, uh, PLC CNC have been distributed that is a very important uh, to 
uh, to get information uh, to get information regarding with that also. Then, sir, regarding the she minister, regarding the uh, regarding the relief fund received by the by the CMO, she minister office, how much the government have been received, and uh, it is it is a proper if the if the she minister can convey that uh, that we have received this much of money uh, from the uh, citizen uh, for the relief so that we can. Uh, do something for the need of the people at the time of uh, uh, the time of lockdown, time of uh, COVID-19 and pandemic. So I also like to express my thanks to the government regarding with the 25 lakh, which which have only given to all the MLAs that we have for uh, try our best for 25 lakh that the government given to us. Uh, all CC assemblies have uh, they have uh, uh, extend their help for their own own people in their own own in a in a very uh, small and limited uh, ways. We are very much thankful that we also can, can do something for the people in, in, in our constituency. So then, sir, the government have only been declared about a Shillong and Tura School Hospital as a COVID-19 hospital. Once the government declared of the COVID-19 hospital, I would like to get information, is there any, any infrastructure that the government have already been installed or the government have been, uh, have been uh, have been uh, keep in, in that uh, in that COVID-19 that additional it may be additional building it may be uh, like ventilators ventilators oxygen and others that the government have, have been uh, take care for the one what declare COVID-19 hospital. So then I also would like to get information from the uh, honourable uh, uh, minister regarding with Asia and Aganodi sir. This is the front liner. So I this I. Express my thanks again to Honourable Chief Minister and uh, and his uh, Council of Minister and the and also the the whole of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the officers and declare the Asia Aganwadi police personnel even health workers as a frontliners they have done a tremendous job especially Asia Aganwadi and police personnel have done a tremendous job so regarding this I would like to get information is there any is uh, is there any financial assistance. At the time of lockdown, is there any financial system given by the given by the government with you, Asia and uh, and also Aganwadi, uh, Aganwadi? Because according to information that uh, I have received, sir, that uh, that Asia and Gwadi, there is uh, there is no uh, talking of recognition. When we're talking about recognition, when talking about uh, about the about the frontliners, at least something we have to do. If not, I will urge the honourable uh, uh, minister do something for them. As a token that we are grateful for the work they have already been uh, committed and doing for the state as a whole. Then, sir, during lockdown, we have already uh, experienced that uh, all the sixties family have given rice you know, to uh, to the poor people. NGOs have given rice, committee have given, church leader have given, MDC have given, MP have given. All of us we have given rice. There is also, there also sir, that uh, rice given by the government of India. I wanted to get information from the from the from the government during lockdown that uh, that the uh, scheme that the rice distribution of rice during lockdown for, for the BPL family or the National Food Security Act. So regarding with the, regarding with this uh, rice that the government have been distributed, whether the, whether the government is government is spending or this is the this is the uh, the assistant getting a free assistant. Uh, given by the by the by the government of India, it would be proper that it is a time that already said that it is a time that we uh, get information all these things, sir. So um, this is uh, this is uh, only the few uh, submission that I, I would like to get uh, from the from the honourable uh, Chief Minister regarding with the fight of the COVID-19, because uh, there is uh, so much of talk in the people that how so much of money, but it will look nice, it will proper that if if this. Uh, Honorable Chief Minister, the government given in, in break up in district wise, the people will the people will come to know this is the amount that have already been spent. So the last uh, there is a, there is one about uh, about the migrant workers. You got the migrant workers. I would like to get information from the uh, from the government. How much uh, government have been spent uh, for the migrant uh, workers uh, in the state? Then, sir, we have all these so from time to time the statement given by Union Finance uh, Finance Minister. And, uh, and also tell about the package, stimulus package given to the whole country. That it would be proper that in, from, in the state of Mekhalia, how much that the package we are getting, we are getting from this from the center during the lockdown. That is a very important so that we understand that uh, 
that the uh, Union Finance Minister, Prime Minister, also spoke um, he spoke in the, in the television that this is the amount extend to all the state in the country. But it would be proper, it would be nice, it would be benefit to all of us that this is the amount of money that the Prime Minister have taken care to our state during lockdown, also for the last uh, seven. So there is a one scheme I would like to make you get information from the minister regarding the Padran Mantri Garif Kalyan package. I don't know whether, the, whether that, that will be in the, same, in the same way that I ask or it may be in, 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 uh, in other way. That Padran Mantri uh, Garif Kalyan package, this is uh, also I want to get the, the information from the Honorable uh, Minister. So I wanted to refer about the, about the way of spending. Of, of money uh, in various state in the country. So the, latest, the state of Maharashtra, for the last, uh, you understand that as of today, the most cases that we have for in the country is Maharashtra. So for information and benefit of the house that the Maharashtra government have been, have been uh, spent, uh, have been allotted about uh, uh, 17,000 crore, 288. That is a total budget of 17,000 crore, 288 for the COVID-19. That is only a remark. By the government number two, uh, the government only unmarked by the government. According to here, they have they, will, they have the intention to spending more, because they spent the case is more in Maharashtra than others in, in the country. What we have seen that even state have been uh, invested so much of money for uh, to fight the COVID-19. So we have for uh, we have for uh, then the the state of uh, Bihar. So Bihar, the state of Bihar. The government of Bihar for the last uh, one week, the latest they have only given that 8,500 crore they have already spent at the fight of, of the uh, of the COVID-19. Uh, then so we have uh, we have the state of Assam. Assam they have uh, they have doing well, like uh, our state, but compared to so the state in the country that Meghalaya is one of uh, I message that one of the best how to how, how to control of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic because of the because of the uh, uh, contribution of each and every citizen. That's why at the beginning of my speech, it is my, it is my duty. It is my duty to express the gratitude because all of us, we have worked together. In spite of many things that uh, for the last seven, eight months, we never, we never ask, we never come out openly for criticize the government, this and that. Because you understand, it is, it is, a, it is a time that we have to work together. We have to extend, uh, we have extend our, I mean, our help, 100 percent like deputy ship like uh like speaker like yourself deputy speaker all this we have work each and every citizen we have worked hard that's why so far that our state is a it's one of uh, the best state i may say uh, for the for the uh, control control and fight of the COVID 19 and i'm sure that all will goes well with with the grace of god and the and the and also that uh, we have to uh, protect ourselves so the state of us uh, the state of uh, assam the state of Assam, they have, uh, they have uh, invested so much of uh, money for the last uh, one month. Can you imagine? The 579.90 lakh, 579 crore, 90 lakh, 31,071. 70, 71 for various expenses, various expenses for the state of, for the fight of COVID-19. 579 crore, 90 lakh, <clears throat> uh, 31,071 rupees. They have only spent, can you imagine, uh, fight? I can't can imagine about the, about the way of spending because we understand it. it's a huge state. Case is more. Many important health is very important. Health is well. That is a top priority of the all over the country, all over the world. World Health Organization also have taken a top priority is health is very important. That's why that I'm sure that the government also will, from now on we understand cases is cases in more will increasing more. But we but we have to work government. I'm sure the government will take top priority. Will be uh, will be the will be the health uh, case so that uh, we can take care for our state. So we have for uh, the small state like uh, like Kohi, like Kohima Kohima. I've spent 139 crore. That is a 100, 139 crore. Then we have for uh, the, the Himachal Himachal Pradesh 264 crore. Then Im Imphal so they have only spent 60 crore. It's own own ways of uh, spending. But we understand so the the spending it depend upon the. It depends upon uh, upon the ex the uh, extension of uh, the uh, financial stand how to treat for your uh, for your people in your in our state. So regarding with this is an issue I put forward, but I put forward that the government government will give for a detailed 
detailed expenditure regarding what have already been said. That uh, I'm sure that people, after the shipments has said, this is the break up, this is the expansion, people will be happy. Like us of the day, people are happy with the, happy that the way of, uh, of doing your, your job. We expect more. They will do more in the days and in the years. So with this uh, few submissions, sir, thank you very much, Deputy Speaker, sir. Thank you. Uh, I would like to know whether those under member who signed in the notice, okay. Mr. H.M. Samplian, you may take the floor now. H.M. Samplian. I'd like to thank uh, the Honorable Deputy Speaker for giving me this opportunity to be part of this discussion. Thank you, sir. So before I actually begin and come to the point of expenditures, I must place on record with a deep sense of appreciation to the Chief Minister and his team, including the officers, starting from the Chief Secretary down the line, in their efforts from the moment that the Corona pan pandemic hit the state in the month of April. With the lockdowns, which is so unprecedented in the history of the state or in the country, we have never seen this kind of pandemic in our life, just as much as we as citizens of the state were totally in the dark of how to handle this whole situation, I guess the government was also in a similar situation. But like I said, that I would like to appreciate and thank the Chief Minister at the head of the team and his government for being able to control this whole pandemic like at the initial stages, we all know there would be a lot of problems which the government was encountering on a daily basis with new battles to counter. <coughs> we had a very unfortunate incident immediately when the COVID pandemic hit the state with the death of the most respected physician of the town. In fact, that whole situation, through the whole situation, Berserk, including the district administration, but the people were calm. The state was calm because we wanted that the government would resolve in the best of its ability. And yes, like I said, the government has done well throughout till this moment. And I wish the government well. I wish the officers well that they must give their best. They must take the people along with them and give the best medical, medical care that they can give. I must appreciate the Honorable Speaker, sir. The Honorable Speaker was equally concerned 
about this whole situation and he constituted a committee called the COVID-19 committee wherein he constituted members from the opposition including the chief minister and some prominent ministers of the cabinet and the bureaucrats to be part of that committee <coughs> to trash, to sort out and resolve all the problems that was coming out of the pandemic situation. So, a few weeks back, we heard from the Honorable Chief Minister about the expenditures in the whole COVID situation. It was followed by a press statement of the Deputy Chief Minister where he gave a categorical statement about the expenditures amounting to 399 crores and he had given few breakups of how this whole amount of nearly 400 crores was spent. So I must appreciate the government for taking initiatives in providing timely rations to the people because the lockdown was so sudden that the people were not in a position to stock the food grains for themselves and the fair price shop dealers and the wholesalers were on their feet to supply the food grains and the rations to the people. I must appreciate the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister who is in charge of labor had come on the right time to provide those kind of important help in the form of cash to the labor class of the state. It went to the tune of crores. I appreciate that gesture of the government really and for me in my constituency as well. The labor class were all benefited with the cash incentives. Sir, so, I feel that the Meghalaya government has done more than expected in its expenditures to the people. People under quarantine, they are getting food in their doorstep. People are being taken care of in their corona care centers. I was just going through the other states of how they do. They have not done as much as we have done. Sir, while I'm giving the good side of the government on all the good things that it has done. Allow me, sir, to point out few things which I feel the government should take note of. The government should take note of of certain expenditures which I consider wasteful, which I consider that the government should have taken care before spending such a huge amount and that I'm relating to the purchase and supply of sodium hypochlorite. So the sodium hypochlorite has been purchased by the NHM And the total bill amount for just two months alone, sir, for the month of April and May, 
is a whopping 8 crore 30 lakhs 77,508. I'll repeat, the amount is 8 crores 30 lakhs 77,508. Sir, there were no orders issued. I can understand. During pandemic, there was a time when maybe situation was such. But, sir, certain formalities should have been observed. There were no formalities. People started supplying on verbal orders and that too. The bills were submitted in the form of sanitation, turnkey work, including supply of sodium hypochlorite. So, sodium hypochlorite is used to sanitize certain infected areas. So, I have done a little bit of arithmetic calculations of how this eight crores has come to. Sir, the cost of sodium hypochlorite is rupees 100 per liter. 100 rupees per liter. Now, it comes in a container of 50 liters, which means it costs about 5,000 rupees per container containing 50 liters. Now, sir, if you do a little bit of arithmetics, you'll find out that actually 8 crore 30 oh sorry 8 lakhs 30,775 liters of sodium hypochlorite had been ordered or purchased I'll repeat 8 lakhs 30,775 liters of sodium hypochlorite was purchased by, uh, by the NHM and that too without any tendering process. Can the department justify where they have sprayed, where have they sprayed 8 lakhs liters of sodium hypochlorite? Let them justify to us. Sir, these are the reasons that we see such a huge expenditures of 400 crores coming in. Unwanted expenditures, unmeasured. So there are many expenditures taken up by the NHM which are not COVID related. Not COVID related at all. I wish the government decides to send a special audit. I demand that the special audit be conducted for all these unwanted expenditures. What are these unwanted expenditures? Renovation of the office, purchase of furniture at very high costs, purchase of televisions, sets. I feel we should refrain from such wasteful expenditures. We appreciate the government doing its job while the government is containing it's best, like I appreciated earlier, in handling this whole COVID situation. It had been praised that at one point of time we had the most minimum cases in the whole country. But suddenly, these kind of wasteful expenditures really tarnishes the image of the government and of all the hard labor that the chief minister has put in. I appreciate the chief minister's relief fund. 
for having been meaningfully used ambulances have been purchased out of this fund food for the people under quarantine has been supplied out of this fund these are the ways that we need to spend the money we would not mind it could be 400 crores it could be 500 crores but as long as the expenditures are related to covid and are justifiable we will not mind to do that but sir i must bring it to the notice of this august house the nhm has been appointing people left right center is the minister aware about it is the chief minister aware about it people from outside the state have also found a place in the appointment who is the authority who is the final authority to appoint these people that's my question today is there any process of recruitment has any advertisement been floated has any interview been conducted or any test been conducted these people have just come from back doors We cannot allow these kind of things happening in the state. When our own people do not get employment, how people from outside the state are getting employment here? So, sir, these are the few issues that I have to say. And before I resume my seat, sir, my last point is many local suppliers are awaiting their bills to be paid by the department they are small time suppliers they are awaiting their bills for months together for being paid my question is when you have spent 400 crores of rupees how these small bills have not been paid small bills of few lakhs of rupees have not been paid to these local suppliers so where has this money gone then to whom have you paid? I request the comment to kindly do justice to everybody. We are not here to say pay to Mr. A, pay to Mr. B, but kindly do justice. When you are paying to suppliers from outside the state, why are you not paying to the suppliers from the state? Please do that justice. And sir, Lastly, we understand that the pandemic is here to stay. We would request the Honorable Chief Minister to kindly dedicate a particular fund, dedicate a particular head of account for expenditures. We cannot allow any expenditures just coming like that and then you regularize it in the form of suppl supplementary demand in the floor of the house. We have seen today there are more supplementary demands coming immediately after this short duration is over. Supple de supplementary demands have been asked. One amount is for 7 crores, one amount is for 400 crores and so on. Therefore, sir, Chief Minister, sir, my request is kindly dedicate a particular fund because this pandemic will remain. So we shall see how we have to, in case the expenditure exceeds, that's the only time the department can come to the floor of the house for supplementary demand. On that note, sir, I resume my seat. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Just building the place. Hmm? Honorable Deputy Speaker, sir. I also stand to participate in this very important short duration discussion that has been moved by several members and initiated by Sri P.T. Saukme, Honourable Member from Maulai. Before I initiate discussion, sir, I also join my fellow members to thank the government for the effort taken to protect the interests, the health, the lives of people and citizens of our state and 
my deepest appreciation goes to all the health workers, the doctors, the nurses, the front liners, the ashas and ganwadis who have dedicated their time, their effort, they have burned the midnight oil to protect their fellow human beings, the citizens, at the same time to ensure that their loved ones at home stay safe. So much has been presented before this August House on the expenses and the need of the R to be accountable, to present before the people of the state on how the government has spent the amount, the 399 crore, maybe till that time, maybe now, we don't know whether it will exceed more, and how this amount is being justified in terms to contain the coronavirus, to protect the lives of citizens, at the same time to augment the healthcare services in order to protect the citizens that have been affected by the coronavirus. Till yesterday, sir, I think the figure must have, has come to about 10,000 plus affected uh, citizens, more than 100 deaths, and uh, we condone the loss of lives and also our condolences goes to the family members who have lost their loved ones due to the virus that has taken away the lives of their family members unexpectedly during this pandemic. We still stand here, to, sir, afraid that a second wave may come because with the onset of winter, perhaps as we are seeing in some of the countries that the second wave has set in. Some countries have again gone into lockdown and this is the time that we are getting to think as whether the steps that we have taken in the past few months were correct or corrective measures have to be taken in order to protect the lives of our citizens in the coming few months. Whether funds will be available whether we need to reorient the entire expenditure. Sir, today there was a, a start question number 31 which didn't come up for discussion. Where the government has said that they have established a state response team chaired by the Commissioner Secretary Health and Family Welfare right from 24th of March 2020 which meets on a regular basis to discuss, deliberate on various situations, protocols, issues pertaining to COVID-19. And the state response team is monitoring the current COVID-19 pandemic situation from different units. And more or less the responsibility that has been vested upon the state response team was to monitor the entire pandemic situation and the affected cases under corona. But then, sir, going to the reply of the government, it is really seen that this state response team has not been vested with any financial powers, nor the responsibility to monitor the financial expenses of the government. The expenses have gone haywire. Multiple sources have been utilized to meet the expenses that have been declared from the CM's relief fund, there have been contribution. Today, there's a supplementary demand of an additional seven crores to meet the expenses, whether this amount has been spent, or just, it has just come for regularization, or this amount is in addition to the already expended amount. From the health department, from the budgeted amount of the department also, an amount has been spent under NHM, as the Honorable Member from Osundam has already highlighted, a lot of amount has been spent. Industries department has also stepped up, sir. 3 crore 32 lakh, 12,040 rupees for supply of mask. And suddenly this industries department, who gave them the authority, where did they supply this mask? Who got 3 crore 32 lakh, sir, 
12,040 rupees just only for supply of masks from the industries department. What kind of masks have been supplied has not been mentioned. But then if you take at the rate of even 10 rupees per mass also, considering the bulk supply, there should have been 33 like mass. We have 5 to 6 like households in the state and 33 like population. So by this measure, we should have, everyone should have got one mass from the industries department. Now this is in addition to the mass that have already been supplied by health department under its regular budget, by the health department under NHM, from the CM relief fund, contributions from various civil society members. But I doubt whether these masks have actually been supplied. If an audit goes also, where will we find these masks now? Three crores are for masks. That also from industries department. Labor department has spent its own to meet the requirements of daily wage earners, laborers, drivers. I hope drivers have been covered. Our hawkers. But again, a supplementary demand has again come up today. Additional 13 crores for, from the labor department to meet the expenses. So whether this amount has already been spent or you need an additional amount, that also we do not know. Perhaps the government may like to clarify. And under DMF, District Mineral Fund, from that also, sir, amounts have been spent for the meeting the expenses of COVID. When I was trying to trace the amounts that have been disbursed, from the government to the various districts, I came to learn that some 27 lakh was earmarked for Ibhoi district under DMF. And the DMF normally has to sit, a committee is there at the district level. But then they have bypassed the committee and this amount has gone directly for COVID expenses. So, Multiple sources have pulled in to meet the expenses for the pandemic. And this shows there is gross financial mismanagement. Because if you talk about prudence in financial management, sir, there should be a source. A state response team was there, but then the state response team was only looking at monitoring the cases, but then it is not be invested with the, with the power and the responsibility to at least monitor the funds that are coming from various sources so that there is no duplicacy. For under NHM, 8, eight lakh liters of uh, the sanitizer was purchased, but from the district also they were purchasing. We MLAs also had to give to the, to the hospitals. This duplicacy could have been avoided. Sir, so, Riboy district had played a major role thanks to the deputy commissioner, the police officers, all the officers that were there to guard the COVID checkpoint at Riboy. Officers were kept in cycles, they were given duties, first with eight, six hours, then four hours, even till today, they are attending to the duties at the COVID checkpoint there in Bernihat. Sir, I want to know from the government whether the officers who had attended to the duties at the COVID checkpoint were provided with travel expenses. I wouldn't expect DA, but then were they provided with travel expenses? When I consulted and uh, discussed with the officers who had attended, six months, not a penny. Not a penny, sir. Junior officers, senior officers, they were expected to pay from their salaries. 
They reach home at three hour at three o'clock in the morning. Immediately after that, they have to get up and go and attend their official duties. But then, why is the government ignoring the officers? They were there, 24 by 7, to guard the COVID checkpoint, following the instructions of the government, but they have to spend from their own pocket. Now, 399 crores, I don't know where it has gone. It is expected that at least some travel fare be given to the officers. Sir, this example is only for you, boy. I don't know for the other uh, COVID checkpoints across the state whether the same measure has been extended. Sir, overheads. When we're talking about financial management, sir, it is expected that the essential items should be purchased from the nearest point so that the cost of overheads will be minimized. Quarantine homes that are under my constituency, they have to wait. BDO has not been vested with the, with the authority. They have to wait for the essential items to come all the way from Nongpo. And that also after a delay of 10 days. And when they get some of the households were unlucky enough to get rotten items. Rotten items circulated in social media. Some of the quarantine uh, essential items they reached after the COVID management committees at the village level they have spent from their own pocket. So these added expenses from the village, from the MLAs, from the MDCs, this should be piled on onto the amount that has been spent of 399 crores plus. The essential items were expected to reach on time. But then since you have to order right away from Nongpo, 65 kilometers away, 50 kilometers away, why wasn't the BDO at the local level given the responsibility? We get a call from these COVID management committees asking, this household, there's only a mother. Her child has been crying for two days now because there are no essential items. She has been put under quarantine. What do we do? Call the BDO. No response. We don't know, sir. We are also waiting for orders. At that time, myself and the community, we had to come together, pool. The essential items came 14 days after the quarantine period was over. Sir, when we talk about compensation to support the daily wage earners, the hawkers, the ones who have really suffered due to loss of livelihoods. Sir, I was surprised at the secretive, secret manner in which these people were identified. Only few people knew. Some had men knew, some did not know. Some committees were informed, some did not know. We MLAs were never informed. So that will spread the awareness, so that there will be no, no one left out. That's why we are left today with what uh, the Honourable Member from Maulai had said, some have got, some have not got. It seems like you're putting people on a race. In spite of losing livelihoods, the compensation was also done in a very haphazard manner. Everybody has suffered. Everybody has suffered. Sir. How do I explain to one household that no, the last date is over. How do I explain to the single mother who feeds her children? How do I explain to the manual laborer who has lost his livelihood for four months that he is not entitled because that last date was over? 
Is there any last date, sir, for this corona? Similarly, for the essential items, still some uh, households were going under quarantine for the past. Uh, last week, they were going under quarantine. Nearly 10 households were asking for essential items. Now, should we tell that essential items are not anymore available or they are still available? Whom do we ask? Everybody is silent now. We ask from the district, no response. Sir, COVID management committees, Honorable CM had uh, promised that he'll be giving 5,000 rupees in the flow of this house to the COVID management committees to meet their expenses. Then later on, we could see in the press that this was raised to 10,000. But until now, there, were, there are many COVID management committees who did not get a single penny. Many. Under my constituency, five villages, they came together under Umroy to form a COVID management committee on their own behest because they couldn't see the suffering of the households. Some households could not even have a proper place to quarantine their family member. My appreciation goes to all the villages, to all the headmen, because it is their own voluntary exercise that they have come forward to set up the COVID management units and at the same time set up the quarantine centers. Just last week, I met one headman from the urban area. I asked, did you get your 5,000 rupees? Yes, we got. But then after writing in the press, we got. Why, sir, do we have to write in the news to get whatever the Honorable CM had already promised to the people? Means the ones who are silent, whether they should they still wait, whether they should keep quiet, or whether they also should come to the streets and ask for the 5,000 rupees in spite of all the hard labor and effort they have put in? Sir, Recently, the Honorable CM had given a statement when there was a sudden spurt in the cases in the urban areas of Shillong that lockdown will not contain the virus. Has this realization dawned too late, sir, on the union and the state government that lockdown was never the answer in the first place? After we have lost livelihoods, after people have suffered due to the sudden closure of shops and being made to spend in excess because there was uncontrolled rise of the prices. People were made to line up from morning till evening for hours to get few bags of rice. So do we call this management or mismanagement? tottering the line of the union government because of MHA orders without realizing, without seeking scientific suggestions. At a time when the virus was not there, the entire state was under lockdown and when the virus was everywhere around the city, the entire city was opened up. Before we, the onset of winter really starts and dawns upon us, sir, these issues, difficulties, hardships that have been faced, I have brought to the floor of this house in order to alert the government. Perhaps the Honorable CM has done his best, he has given his all out, sir. During the month of March, April, he was there giving all the press conferences online, trying to give assurance to the people that nothing will happen to the state. We had, the government was there to protect them. But sir, these instances, people are now losing confidence. If you go to the markets, 
if we ask, if you see the people in the rural areas especially, nobody is bothered to wear masks anymore. Because they say Corona is only benefiting the suppliers. Corona is benefiting only those people who have businesses to do with the government at this time. For the poor people, it's like squeezing the livelihoods. Farmers selling their produce at throwaway prices. So, with these few submissions, I have brought to the notice of the government, hoping that the problems that have been faced by the people, misconceptions that have been built around this entire expense, be clear. And the duplicacy which we are seeing now in terms of expenditure, be set right. And the state response team should look into all these expenses and I also second the proposal given by the Honourable Member for Mohsen Ram that a dedicated account, a dedicated head of account, dedicated team should look into this so that further loss is not incurred to the state and we will protect not only the lives of the citizens, sir, but the precious resources that are being spent in the fight for coronavirus. So with this few words, sir, I wish the government of the day the very best. At the same time, give our assurance that we'll be there together, hand in hand, to support the government in this fight and also to protect the lives of our citizens. This few words, sir, I resume my seat, sir. May I request your minister in charge to reply? Sir, at the very outset, I would like to thank Shri Piti Sokme, Shri Hima Shampliang, Shri George Lingdo, and uh, I hope I haven't left out anybody, uh, or honorable members of the Meghalaya Legislative Assembly for having raised the short duration discussion on matter relating to the news item published in the Kasi Daily newspaper Maupur, dated 17th August 2020, with the caption, Pilut Ka Jilla Da Ki Spa Klorban Yakun COVID, regarding expenditure <coughs> incurred in fighting COVID-19 pandemic. Sir, I'll just like to uh, request that uh, I be given some time in this. Uh, I need to go through the document that has been uh, prepared because it has all the necessary breakups that uh, most of the uh, members have asked for. And then, of course, I have the additional supplementary notes for uh, individual points also. Uh, so we are all aware that even the most developed countries and some of the more developed states of India have found it extremely difficult to counter the challenges posed by the onset of the pandemic. However, our government rose to the occasion and faced the challenges head on. Till the month of June, we were the state with the lowest number of COVID cases. Since then, we have consistently been among the states with the lowest number of cases. The state made a conscious decision to provide the best possible care and support to citizens during these unprecedented times. Despite the falling tax collections and the shortage of resources, we have prioritized the fight against COVID and invested resources in a timely manner. Since March, we have ramped up our RT-PCR, TrueNAT, CBNAT testing capacity per day from 30 to now over 2,000. As of date, we have conducted over 2.14 lakh tests and are among the top states when it comes to the number of tests conducted per million of population. At a mortality rate of 0.9%, we are also among the very few states that have a mortality rate of less than 1%. In the last seven months, we improved health infrastructure, provided generous relief to the most disadvantaged section of the society, made funds available to our honorable MLAs so they can take up relief work in their respective areas and provided the best corona care facilities. In these extraordinary times of the pandemic, we rose to the occasion 
and did the things that every responsive government has to do, prioritized the lives, health and well-being of all the citizens affected by COVID and of those whose lives have been disrupted by the lockdown. So all these interventions need investment of financial resources and has already been disclosed in the public domain. The state has spent 399 crores on the various health and non-health related aspects of management of COVID. This expenditure was made by the various departments of the government as follows. The health department, including Directorate of Health Services and NHM, number one, 271.2 crores. Revenue and Disaster Management, SDRF Fund, 23.7 crores. Revenue and Disaster PM Care, 3.5 crores. Chief Minister's Relief Fund, 7.4 crores. CM Special Grant, 14.7 crores. Mining and Geology DMF, 8.9 crores. Labor Department, 51 crore. Community and Rural Development and Urban Affairs, SRWP, SUWP, 15.1 crore. Urban Affairs, 3.5 crores, total of 399. Out of the 399 crores of expenditure, bills have been paid of 251 crores and the pending liability are 148 crores. The government has tapped into various sources to make the COVID expenditure in addition to the state government's own resources. The following are the various sources of funds in addition to state's own sources. Number one, National Health Mission, 43.4 crores. Number two, State Disaster Response Fund, 23.7 crores. Number three, Prime Minister's Citizen Assistant Assistance and Relief in Emergency Situations Fund, 3.5 crores. Chief Minister's Relief Fund, 7.4 crores. District Mineral Foundation Fund, 8.9 crores. Meghalaya Building and Other Construction Workers Welfare Fund, 12.9 crores. North East Council, 3 crores. Member of Parliament, L Local Area Development Scheme, 1 crore. Total, 103.8 crores. So I will now focus on some of the key items of expenditure and explain the rationale for making the expenses. Testing. Sir, I would like to inform you and the House that the state had to be dependent on Negrims for COVID-19 testing and they were limited to 30 tests per day during the beginning of the pandemic. As of today, we have conducted over 2.14 lakh tests. Since the inception of the statehood, we have not had a single biosafety level 2 category lab, lab in the state which is required for testing viruses like COVID-19. So with a lot of pride, I would like to mention that in a span of two months, the state had established two such BSL-2 lab labs in Thura Civil Hospital and Pasteur Institute, Shillong. These facilities have conducted more than 52,804 RT-PCR tests so far and continue to do more. These facility facilities will stay beyond COVID-19 and the state will pursue, them to get, will pursue to get them converted into biosafety level 3. As I had mentioned even yesterday in the House, the state is determined to not lose the opportunity this crisis has given to improve the health system. Testing has been established in all 11 districts of the state and Mairang subdivision. The state government has also assisted the private hospitals in setting up the testing centers so that the citizens may benefit and the hospitals are also equipped to handle any such crisis. So I would like to mention that the state since the beginning had supported Negrims more than once. Following are some of the items that were provided to them. RNA isolation kit, 32,500 numbers. Rapid antigen test kits, 4,400 numbers. RT-PCR detection kits, 
3,000 numbers. PPEs and N95 masks as well have been provided. In order to promote access to masks and encourage the habit of wearing masks for all, various initiatives to provide free masks were taken by the state. These are reusable and cloth masks that are suitable to the environment as well. With the rise in the number of positive cases in the state, the state government took a decision to conduct random sampling in high-risk areas such as marketplaces, containment zones, etc., to understand whether community spread had taken place. In order to do this smoothly, over 75 rapid response teams were created in the state. The recruitment for these units were done at the district level, and 407 health and related workers have been employed in these teams. They also help in managing the containment zones in their respective areas. Large number of additional manpower was also recruited for managing the testing, various other support activities at hospitals and other health facilities. The total expenditure on contractual and human resource is about 15 crores and on testing including lab and surveillance is 38.9 crores. The Corona Care Centers. In order to strengthen our quarantine and isolation facilities, which was absolutely the only way initially known to stop the infection, Corona Care Centers were created in each of the districts. In total, we had up to 25 Corona Care Centers with a bed capacity of 1,205. I would like to again mention clearly to the House that these were set up apart from those already in place at hospitals. These Corona Care Centers were set up in record time. IIM Umsauli with a bed capacity of 201 beds was the largest center during the time of inauguration in the Northeast region. There were, no, there were no other such facilities with individual toilets for every occupant anywhere else. We have so far quarantined or isolated over 25,000 persons across the state. Each person, if under quarantine, would have stayed on an average for two to three days and if isolated, would have occupied for 14 days. All these expenses were borne by the state. These Corona care centers are exclusively manned by over 916 persons around the clock, not to mention the doctors who are deputed from other facilities. There was a significant cost to the setting up of the CCCs and, the, and, the op and operating the same. An amount of 30.8 crores was spent on setting up and management of the Corona Care Centers. Isolation facilities in hospitals. Honorable Sir, apart from the 1,205 beds in the Corona Care Centers, there are about 601 dedicated isolated beds functional in 20 major hospitals across the state. These beds are exclusively from the beds that have been kept ready at CHCs and PHCs. Over 2,365 patients have been treated in these hospitals so far. The state is in the progress of setting up ICUs in Reshubilpara, Mokurwat, Bakmara, Pulbari, Antura, MCH to fill in the gaps. The invisibility and high transmissibility rate of the virus was a source of concern. There was a need to build health systems in order to deal with any impending surge. Before the pandemic, the entire state had only four ventilators, which have now increased to more than 200 ventilators, 75 of which have been installed and are ready. Quarantine facilities for health workers. Sir, as you are aware, our health workers, our health care workers, including doctors and nurses, have been on the front line to help us fight COVID-19, putting their own lives at risk. To ensure proper quarantine facilities, various hotels and guest houses were requisitioned to suffice the requirement. Accordingly, an amount of Rs 2.67 crores has been paid to various hotels and guest houses. This also helped these hotels and guest houses to meet their committed expenses and ensure the job of the employees. Various protective equipments. 
Speaker Sir, I am sure that the House would agree that most of us had not heard of PPE, known as Personal Protective Equipment or even the N95 masks. The state had very, very minimal stock of PPEs and not to mention almost zero N95 masks. It is, almost, it is also imperative to understand that due to the nationwide lockdown, the logistics of such essential medical equipments was severely affected. This was the same situation across the states and Meghalaya was no exception. There were several unfortunate protests by the health work, healthcare workers at hospitals in major states demanding for adequate such protective equipments, personal equipments. But due to our early procurement measures, we never faced any such shortage, thanks to the union government, which had relaxed the procurement norms for speedy procurements. The logistics had eased only after special cargo flights were arranged by the union government in collaboration with the Air Force and other flight operators. The state was in a condition to prepare during this period to face the situation that was coming. For decentralization of processes, health infrastructure at the district level were also ramped up, where testing facilities were also made available in various districts of the state. District hospitals were also provided with oxygen cylinders, ventilators, and other related equipments to meet the requirement of COVID treatment. So I wish to place on record that the state was so well equipped that we were in a position to share 500 viral transport media to the state of Assam during their surge in cases in Guwahati. We were also thankful for, to Assam for helping us during the initial phases of testing. Ambulances. So the state had purchased a total of 55 number of ambulances during this period to strengthen the referral transport system. We had also placed orders for mortuary vans for each district. Four of them have already been put in place in East Khasi Hills, West Jente Hills, West Karo Hills and North Karo Hills, while the rest are expected to be in place within the end of the month. Of the existing 158 ambulances across the state that include 108 service ambulances, 25 were placed and 30 more were added to various facilities across the state. Sanitization. Speaker, sir, I'm sure that none of us had to use so much hand sanitizer in our entire lifetime. From being a product that was used only by a negligible populace in the country, it had suddenly become the most wanted product. We had to provide sanitizers liberally to all our healthcare workers and other service providers in order to bring about a behavior change and also to bring confidence in them while being on the field. Apart from this, so many institutions had to be sanitized regularly for clinical and psychological reasons. This started with the secretariat, corona care centers, containment zones, market areas, health facilities, including Negrims, etc. There were hardly any service providers for these purposes when the pandemic hit us. It wasn't an easy task to mobilize such personnel on such short notices, particularly during the lockdown. There was so much fear and misinformation that there were hardly anyone willing to wear a PPE and perform these activities. However, we have overcome these situations after a lot of planning and effort. Sir, in addition to the different direct health related expenditures, we also incurred expenditure on providing relief and the much needed support to the various sections of the society in the last few months. The number of these interventions were taken, a number of these interventions were taken up in tune with our philosophy of creating a sensitive and responsive government. Some of the important interventions are as follows. Stranded citizens and returnees. Honorable Speaker, sir, as all of us are aware, there were thousands of residents of the state who were stranded outside the state and wanted to return home. As they could not return owing to the lockdown, the government decided to provide a one-time cash support of rupees 3,000 to a level of 10,049 for such stranded citizens. These citizens included students, working professionals, migrant laborers, and others. 
a total amount of 3.01 crores was incurred on this intervention. When the unlock process started, the government arranged for 14 special trains from all over the country, including Chennai, Bangalore, Mumbai, Delhi, Hyderabad, Gurugam, Kerala, Goa, Gujarat, and Rajasthan for bringing back our stranded citizens. These citizens were then transported by bus from Guwahati Railway Station to their homes and quarantine locations. The state government also arranged for buses for all the northeast, northeastern states to bring back the stranded citizens. And for this, an expenditure of 2.85 crores has been incurred till date. A huge infrastructure was also put in place for screening and testing returning citizens. Detailed logistics were made for each returning from their point of pickup at the railway station, providing them with food, screening them, testing, and quarantine at designated centers. It is also to be noted that the testing at entry and before discharge and logistic expenses for the returnees were borne by the government. All the returnees until the rapid antigen tests were made available were tested by RT-PCR. Provision kits. Provision kits consisting of essential items like food grains, pulses, toiletries, etc. were provided for those undergoing home quarantine. These kits and supplies for a family of five members for 14 days. The district machinery and various teams reached out to every quarantined household to ensure that provisions were made available to them. A total of 32,555 kits were distributed throughout the state. Accordingly, an amount of 6.11 crores has been incurred towards these expenses. Community quarantine centers. One of the success stories of our COVID management is the involvement of our communities in every aspect. Our communities also had to be supported so that they are able to redouble their efforts in dealing with the pandemic. Accordingly, an amount of 1.5 crores paid at a rate of 10,000 per community, uh, community quarantine center has been spent. Relief to building and other construction workers. In order to mitigate the distress faced by building and other construction workers and to compensate wage loss on account of the shutdown due to COVID, the government has extended a monetary grant of 1,000 per beneficiary per week for three weeks to all active and registered beneficiaries for the period starting from 23rd March 2020. An additional amount of 2,000 each was also subsequently approved for payment to the active and registered workers as COVID compensation allowance. The total expenditure incurred for all the districts in the state is 12.9 crores. Relief to unregistered workers against wage loss. Sir, as you are aware, laborers across the country were rendered out of work and there was deep distress because of this. The government of Meghalaya did not want such a situation to arise in the state and therefore launched the Chief Minister's Relief Against Wage Loss scheme in order to provide relief to these people. Under the scheme, relief payments for three weeks were approved for payment to each eligible wage earner, laborer, petty trader at the rate of 700 per week. Accordingly, an amount of Rs 38.1 crore was transferred to the eligible claimants. MLA scheme. So we also wanted to give the honorable MLAs more flexibility to provide relief and support to their constituents during the very difficult period of the lockdown. Accordingly, we amended the guidelines of SRWP and SUWP and provided 25 lakhs per MLA to take up related activities to COVID relief. So in conclusion, I would like to reiterate that the government did not spare any effort or leave any stone unturned in dealing with the pandemic. Our efforts were appreciated across the board, including the World Health Organization, which commended the state's approach towards managing the pandemic. During the meetings that were held under your chairmanship to discuss the pandemic, the honorable members of the opposition had also appreciated and showed satisfaction in the way our government had handled the crisis. 
independent journalists, our students who had returned, residents of our states who, man who happened to come here have placed on record the appreciation and sensitive support that Meghalaya has shown. Sir, we have given utmost priority to saving human lives, preventing the spread of the pandemic and alleviating the discomfort of lakhs of our citizens. Despite the urgency and the unprecedented nature of the crisis, the expenditures were made carefully and following the due process. Through the various COVID-related interventions, we were able to reach out and support about 5 lakh individuals of the state, almost 15% of the state's population. Given that the pandemic is far from over and given the context of the second wave of infections and lockdowns in several European countries, I feel confident that this government has made the right investments which not only protect us in the last seven months but should also keep us in good stead in the coming months. So apart from uh, this, there were a number of other issues that were raised by the, by the honourable members and uh, I would just take a few minutes to try and address some of the issues that were mentioned by them. So I think uh, the first issue I would like to uh, uh, just touch on, uh, of course with the outset, sir, I must say that whatever has happened in the past eight months has been unprecedented, number one. And number two, sir, we have seen the response come from every section of society. And we have been able to come so far only because of the efforts made by everyone. And I think I would place on record, especially, my appreciation and thanks to the frontline workers, because this has not been easy for them. You can imagine working for a month, two months like this, but going on for seven, eight months every single day is mentally uh, a big challenge and it's not easy for them to do. I must place on record the work being done by the frontline workers and of course the officers who have really put in a lot of effort to make sure that we were able to a large extent contain the situation. So regarding the lockdown that was mentioned by one of the members, I think uh, nobody really uh, at that point in time when it hit us in March, lockdown was the only uh, option that we had at that point in time. And we have seen this in history, even during the Spanish flu, when this happened, lockdown was seen as one of the main ways in which we could contain the situation. And obviously, we all understood that lockdown is actually a, a, a way to give us the time to prepare for the next coming months. So really, we looked at lockdown at that point also when we had lockdown, that we would get the time to, number one, contain the virus from spreading too fast, and number two, prepare our system so that we get ready that when we do unlock, then we are in a position to handle it. And I think we must also appreciate the fact that when this hit us, as was being mentioned by one of the members, I think it was Honorable Member for Mausungram, that it was a sudden shock. And a lot of things were not clear as to how we will move forward and what uh, steps to be taken. So. In such situations, government has to take a decision. And sometimes we look back and we say whether the decision is right or not. But if you put yourself in that position at that moment, you just don't know how things will unfold in the future. So we had to take a decision and we took it. And I think looking back at the entire process, I feel that it was the right decision that has been taken and it has shown its impact. And uh, we have been able to contain the situation to a large extent. So there was a, a mention about uh, the fact that uh, the COVID management committees had not received uh, you know, some funds. So the COVID management committees have most of the COVID management committees, I should say, and we had stressed on the active ones in the beginning. So there could be a chance that there were some that were non-active. But almost close to 1,521 community quarantine centers received the money from the uh, Chief Minister's Relief Fund, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So, so the COVID management uh, thing, so they could be. So it's a massive exercise with multiple things happening. There is a possibility that somewhere we missed out a few co community centers. It's not on purpose, but you can imagine the kind of work and pressure that people were under. Still, we managed to cover most of the areas. And if there are any shortcomings, sir, everybody's a human being. 
and a system and a, and a, and a task that we, had, we were doing at that point in time, the kind of coverage that we had to do, the kind of pressure that people were under. And there could have been one or two slips, but I think that was not intentional. And if there are any situations like that, uh, we would be very happy to, uh, to, you know, to, to rectify that. And also, sir, that's the reason why we ensured that we had support from all angles. So if we could not get it through the COVID management, uh, this committees could not get it through the Chief Minister's Relief Fund, we had given 25 lakhs to the MLAs, so the flexibility was there for them also to be able to help. So all these aspects were balanced out so that somehow or the other, the individuals would get the help. So regarding the uh, one point that was mentioned by Honorable Member from Mausengram, regarding uh, sodium hypochlorite. So I would like to just clarify to him that the amount that was spent on this was only one crore and not eight crores. And we had bought about 37,000 uh, liters with that. The rest of the amount which was mentioned by him was actually spent for disinfecting and for sanitizing different buildings and centers. And as was mentioning in my reply, that at that point in time, it was so difficult to find anybody to do anything. And even if people wanted to do it, their communities and their families would not allow them to come out <clears throat> and go and do the work. So we had a major challenge in getting the manpower to be able to do this. But nonetheless, we had to spend money and we managed to get it because it had to be done. It was almost like a war-like situation. And we had a lot of challenges. And looking back, as I said, uh, it is more important that we save lives and we don't give anything to chance. And that at that point in time, we made the decision that we will keep our focus and our objective very clear, which is to keep our people safe. And health will always be the priority. And that is why we made the decision at that point in time. But the numbers that was mentioned by Honorable MLA, I just wanted to clarify on that aspect also. And uh, as I was mentioning in my uh, reply, sir, that there were a lot of people who were recruited. That's absolutely right. We had to recruit people because we could not let the deputy commissioners and the ADCs and the uh, officials from the PHA department, PWD department to run the COVID management system. So we slowly started. In the beginning, of course, we had to because we had no choice. But as we managed to move further, we started to outsource and get new people to manage certain parts of the responsibility and the work so that our officials could be free to do the normal work in governance. So in that process, hundreds of people were, uh, were recruited. I think I mentioned about 400, 500 were recruited. But these were again recruited through proper process. And there were interviews that were held. In fact, I think you remember that in one interview, uh, there was a positive uh, patient that came in in, 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 in Nongpo, if I was not wrong. And it became a big issue, sir. So we followed the process under the given circumstances, and we tried to resolve the issues as much as possible. Uh, so regarding the construction workers, so I can tell you that the unregistered laborers. So we had, in fact, when we started the process, our Honorable Deputy CM and the other officials had told us that we will be having approximately 90,000 to 1 lakh people is what we expect. And that's the reason why we said let's go ahead with this because people need help. So by the time we started a registration process, by the time we started asking the BDOs and other officials at the grassroots level, the district level to send the information to us, we came out with a figure of 2,33,000. And then ultimately when we again screened these numbers, we came to know that almost uh, 45,000 of them were uh, uh, duplicate records. So we then removed those 40, 50,000 and we came up with a 181,000 number. My point being, sir, is that a lot of due diligence in a limited time and under tremendous pressure, while so many things were going on, this exercise was completed. And yes, uh, the, 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 the time frame was short. We had to move very fast. We could not reach out maybe to 100%. But I think whatever help we could give to whoever has gone directly to these people and as I said, the selection process has been done in a very meticulous manner. And I'm happy to hear from the honorable members that uh, these provision kits that were given, again, a large number of provision kits were given, sir. And uh, I'll just tell you, so we spent about 3.29 crores um, in this provision kits that were given to the family members. And this again was done through the uh, chief minister's uh, Relief, no, not relief fund. This was done through the Chief Minister's special, special grant. 
So under this special grant, we had started uh, doing this, and sir, no other state, I think, no other state, uh, as far as my knowledge goes, has done this exercise. We are the only states who did it. And it's kind of satisfying to hear the complaint coming from the honorable member who had mentioned that how come these people did not get? It means that it really mattered and it really made a difference. So yes, it could have been that few people did not get it because of maybe the logistics and the fact that the exercise was so big. But I think the effort has been appreciated and as I said, our state is the only state which has actually gone ahead and given this kind of provision kits. I'm, I mean, I'm not aware of any other state that has done that. Uh, apart from that, sir, the, uh, the, regarding the aspect of uh, the, the, the COVID management that we had done, so we had a, a state response team which was being mentioned. And so the state's response team really was only to integrate and monitor the entire process that's taking place to ensure that there is a, a body or there's a team that actually looks at all the aspects of testing, entry, protocols, all these aspects. Because sir, the expenditure that was done had to be done by the respective departments. You cannot expect the state response team to end up giving money to the laborers because it can't be done by them because they don't have the information and more importantly, it would take too much of time. So the departments had to deal with it and obviously finance was coordinating the entire thing. So therefore, it's not that things were happening in a haphazard manner. There was, uh, if, if, uh, if you recall, sir, we were informed in the, in the meeting also, that during the first few days of COVID, in fact, the first three months, the, we used to sit at chief minister's level every day at three o'clock, including Saturdays and Sundays. So about three months, we met every day to review the COVID situation. And so what is money is being spent where, how things are happening, overall control, overall the trains, how, where have they reached, have they left or not, how many students are there. All this exercise was happening at, 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 at my level, at the chief minister's level, and we were monitoring this. So therefore the coordination was being done at the top and including the expenditures was being done by the finance department. Sir. So therefore the state response team had its role to play, but when it came to the financial expenditures and all, most of the expenditures, uh, in fact, were being coordinated by the finance department. Expenditures were made at their level. And of course, the SDs have come in. These are all expenditures which need to be regularized, as we know. So the budget provisions are there fully, only for a certain amount. And when we realized that this amount is not enough to meet this particular expenditure, we had to spend, but now we have to regularize it. And so therefore, the SDs are coming in. So I think uh, that aspect also I thought I would clarify. The, regarding the industries department making the masks. So this was an effort that was being done by the industries department to promote the self-help groups. We gave this money to all the self-help groups of our state. Our women and the self-help groups who made these masks, they were given this money which went directly into the economy. So we realized that it's a win-win situation. So if we buy the masks from the market, maybe the money will go to outside companies as was being mentioned. But by ensuring that the self-help groups make it, We'll get the masks also, at the same time, they will also get a livelihood. So this three crores that was spent on the masks was actually done from an employment or you can say livelihood perspective and a win-win situation and industries being the department that is handling these aspects, we rooted the money through the industries department at that point in time. But as I said, this money meant, went directly to the self-help groups of our state, which is our women and other groups. And I had already mentioned, sir, that, uh, that yes, there are pending bills that are there. So the 3.99 crores, uh, 399 crores is the total expenditure. And out of this cash payment or whatever payments, not cash, I'm sorry, payments that have been made to these, uh, against these bills is to the tune of 251 crores. So we still have 148 crores, which is due. So therefore, we have not given the entire 399 crores yet, sir. So therefore, I think there will be some uh, individuals who have not received. And there are multiple reasons for it. Uh, you know, sometimes there is a delay in the paperwork. Sometimes the departments have to coordinate. Uh, the departments actually are so busy with the work at the grassroots level that they cannot finish the paperwork. So these challenges are something that don't come out in the open. But I think when you're in the office, you will realize and see that these teams have to really work in a very, very difficult situation 
and therefore there could be delays in certain uh, instances. But whenever we come to know about these delays, we ensure that we push the departments to make sure that the most important expenditures and small expenditures especially for our uh, local suppliers is met. So if there are any such suppliers, please let us know. We will move things fast. As I said, it was like a warlike situation. It still is. And we are fighting a, you know, a very difficult situation. And in this situation, as I said, uh, uh, we have done our best. And I feel the response has been tremendous from everyone. And we've been able to contain situation to a large extent. Uh, sir, I, I, had, I think the honorable member who had initiated the discussion had asked a number of questions on all details of all these, um, you know, district-wise and the hotel bills and uh, the ASHA workers. I think it's worth mentioning the ASHA, sir, because uh, I also agree that it's an important part of it. So, so regarding the ASHA, sir, rupees 1,000 per ASHA since January 2020 has been paid per month over and above their normal incentive. So this is an additional amount. So it's been 10 months now. So we've given 10,000 per ASHA additional has been given so far and there are 6,804 of them in the state. So we have taken note of that. We have tried to help them out uh, with the limitations that we had. Um, and so as I said, the details of the expenditures that they had wanted, I think it will be more appropriate, sir, I can put down uh, in, a, in, a, in a breakup of the points that uh, the Honorable Member from Maulai had mentioned and I can place it on the table of the House because if I go through all of it, so it's going to be really long. I mean, we have the vehicles. Just to give an idea, the Chief Minister's Relief Fund because uh, it's something that I deal with directly. So we have received 10 crores, 35,000 rupees till date. And we have bought 25 uh, ambulances for 108 amounting to 4.5 crores. Three biomedical wastes amounting to 38,65,620. Purchase of 10 eco ambulances at the cost of 47,77,480. We have paid for the, uh, the community quarantine centers to all the deputy commissioners through the Chief Minister's Relief Fund at 1, 1 crore 52 lakh 10,000. And we have paid for um, an additional 10 uh, ambulances, eco ambulances. Uh, eco ambulances at 47 lakhs again 77,480. So we have spent about 7 crore 36 lakhs 30,580 rupees from the Chief Minister's Relief Fund. And obviously, we are left with another rough, I, I don't know the exact amounts, but it's about 2. Point, yeah, 2.64 crores approximately still left uh, with us. So, like that, we have all the details in the breakup. I don't know whether. We will have the time to go through all of that, but as I mentioned, sir, I think it will be making much more sense if I put it on the place it on the table of the house. Um, everything from the school fees, the ambulance, the CMRF, the different uh, bookings of the trains and the flights, the infrastructures in the hospitals and the COVID centers, uh, the hotel bills that he had mentioned about. So all of this is there, sir, and I think I'll place that uh, in the table of the house. And so just to conclude, I would like to say that uh, we must all appreciate the fact that uh, we never faced a situation like this. And therefore, uh, for one to just simply uh, look at this as a normal situation and, uh, you know, looking back at the whole thing, saying that, well, this could be done this way, this could be done that way, uh, I think it's easier said than done. When it, the situation demands for certain decisions to be taken, we don't know what's coming forward. But all we know is we need to do the best to take care of our people. And we did that. And I think the justification for all these aspects are there. When we were in the month of March, and everybody wants the offices to be sanitized. Everybody is looking for the PPE, PPE, PPE. You know, I had like hundreds of suppliers who came to me saying that I can supply you PPE, I can supply you PPE. And I mean, we were like going crazy trying to understand what's happening. So in those situations, it's very difficult sir, sometimes to really say that uh, whether we can follow the uh, due process because as I said, uh, we, we followed the due process in almost all the cases. Government of India in fact had allowed the states to, to, uh, to yeah, so government of India had allowed sir on 27th of March uh, saying that for procurement, 
the prevailing health emergency requires immediate procurement of certain items in quantities which may not be available with a single supplier or within the time frame in which they are needed. There is also a possibility that some items may be not be available in the country in sufficient quantity within the time frame in which they were needed. Certain items of equipments are currently in global short supply and are effectively in a seller's market." In quote. There, is, there are also variations in spe specifications within the same category of items and hence price differences may sometimes reflect differences in the specifications of quantity. In view of the uh, urgency involved in the procurement of medical and other essential supplies, where time is of essence and delay may result in loss of lives, the following specific special instructions are issued for any emergent purpose related to COVID-19 purchase. The provisions of Rule 149 will not be applicable to purchase made under Rule 166 or Rule 204. So, I mean, these are just, I'm just trying to tell you that even Government of India, MHA, realized the situation at that point in time and give specific orders to the state, relaxing the norms to which you can make procurements, keeping in mind the health conditions and the health situation that we're facing. So therefore, so this is the kind of situation we faced and we did our best. Uh, the numbers are open. Anybody can come and see every single rupee. There is no question of hiding any facts or any numbers in this, sir. And as I said, I will place in detail all the points that were mentioned by the honourable members on the table of the House, sir. With these few words, sir, I'd like to resume my seat. Thank you, sir. Sir, one small clarification, sir. This is just a short yeah, I, Yes, sir. Just one small one, sir. Just one small one. Yeah. Sir, I have just two issues. Number one. I would request the Honourable Chief Minister to kindly just uh, uh, get back into the papers which have been supplied to him relating to the bills of 8 crore 30 which I had mentioned, sir. Sir, I have details with me also. My details speaks very clearly about the items supplied. It says sanitation, turnkey work including sodium hypochlorite, transportation, protection gears, of designated places and this whole amount there are about four or five bills all accumulated together that has come to 8 crore 30 lakhs that one that I mentioned so therefore sir my stand is still the same like honorable chief minister mentioned that the purchase of sodium hypochlorite is only for one crore but I say my figures also I have obtained it says I, I will not mention the names of the firms but it says work order number and date nil and then it says bill number then it says item supplied sanitation turnkey work including sodium hypochlorite transportation and protection gear, gears this is just for two months the whole amount came to eight crores 30 lakhs so second point is relating to the appointment i appreciate that the government is doing its best and i have already appreciated whatever work that the government has been doing to contain the pandemic Sir, my only issue is, please appoint people, no problem. But the process of your appointment, as Honorable Chief Minister said, we are maintaining the due process. I appreciate it. But how two people from outside the state have found their place in the office of the NHM? I'm not trying to get personal at anybody. I'm not trying to get personal at anybody. But these two persons have been brought by the MD NHM, and they are from outside the state. If they have cleared the tests in due process of recruitment, I have no objection. But if they have just come from the back door, then they have to be removed immediately. That's all, sir. Thank you. Sir, um, so first of all, um, I would like to once again clarify that uh, the honorable member himself has now uh, admitted that the eight crores that he mentioned was for sanitizing various affected buildings, uh, protective gear, transport, including sodium hydrochloride. The reason I had to clarify this is because he was then dividing the eight crores by, divided by 100 rupees per liter, so there should be, I don't know how many lakh liters should be there. So that was a wrong calculation. So it should be divided by the one crore. So therefore, he was trying to, um, uh, you know, kind of, uh, magnify the whole thing by dividing only eight crores. So out of the eight crores, only one crores was spent on hypochlorite and you need to make the calculations accordingly. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. 
uh, that we wanted to clarify. Uh, let me just reply. Let, let, let me just reply. Just for transportation, sir. Yeah. Seven crores. Honourable member, member, please let the chief yeah. reply. Please. So, so no, that's what. So, and it's a transport and also sanitizing of various buildings. Sir, if you recall during that time, everybody wanted the road to be sanitized. Everybody wanted their house to be sanitized. We had to sanitize Bethany Hospital hundred times. Secretariat had to be sanitized. I mean, and at that point in time, we couldn't find people to, to do that job also. As I said, people were not ready. So it was a very, very uh, complicated uh, situation we were facing. So therefore, this 8 crores includes the sanitization of the buildings and the transportation and the protective gears and the sodium hydrochloride. So I'm just saying that he should not just sig single out the sodium hydrochloride. Number two, regarding the appointments that were made, Sir, the processes are being followed at all levels and including, I think, the people who uh, obviously, sir, for, for the state government, we are ensuring we have employed maybe 500, 600 people have been recruited now and we're very happy that our own boys and girls are getting job and that's part of the entire economic process also that we'd like to follow, that we're realizing that people can be recruited in this fight against COVID and our people will get a job. So it has been the uh, very clear objective of the government to do that. Uh, and as for the inf information that has been provided to me, that the individuals, because I don't know uh, the individuals he's mentioning about, but there are a lot of service providers who are who have been given certain parts to do. Like, for example, we have some people who are helping us with the IT part, some people helping us with certain other uh, technical part. So these individuals who have come from outside are people who have been brought in by these uh, in the service providers. And uh, that is not in our, in our uh, control. We have given and outsourced the work to the service providers and they can get uh, local people or they can get people from outside. That's not the government's recruitment. But from the recruitment that we have done, number one, we have followed the process. And number two, we have ensured that our local people get the work. Mm -hmm.